Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have the latest from the live radar of the UK V, look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as it is remaining fairly cool as we head into this upcoming working week but it is going to turn increasingly unsettled especially further north and westwards where we could see a lot of precipitation in the next few days. As a result of the cold air remaining across Scotland we could actually see some quite significant snow over the high ground really only over at least two to three hundred meters of elevation but in these areas we could see 10 20 maybe even more centimeters of snow hopefully though fingers crossed as we head into the Easter bank holiday weekend in around five or six days time things start to turn a little bit drier but the longer term signal as we'll see from the GFS GM Eastern Berth and the ensembles is for this unsettled pattern to continue and potentially turn even colder as we head into early April some runs even have some quite significant cold starting to push in from the north of course being the middle of spring it's not going to be incredibly cold as if it was in january but it still could put a real chill to the air overnight frosts and the risk of continued hill snow so do remember if you enjoy videos which you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in the description now if you start on the live radar you can see we're kind of in between weather systems at the moment that northerly wind that arrived through friday and uh, Saturday has now started to get cut off. Uh, again, the cold air is still around, but it's just meant that the winds aren't as strong today and we haven't got as low in, in terms of pressure. And that means that there are showers around. But you can see out to the west across parts of the Republic of Ireland, southwest England, rain is starting to push in. And these are the next weather systems that are going to push in and really intensify through Monday and Tuesday and set up the incredibly unsettled or even if not stormy conditions towards the middle of the week as we see some real big lows start to spin up now if you look at the temperatures as around half four you can see temperatures are slightly higher today and that's due to the sun being out uh, less cloud around means that sun is able to heat the ground quite more uh, quite a bit more than it did yesterday and that's allowed those temperatures to climb an extra few degrees up towards that sort of 10 to 12 degree range instead of that seven or eight degree range we saw yesterday still where we see the cloud come over a bit of shade those winds pick up it does still feel pretty cold indeed out there but at least a little bit of a positive today with that extra sunshine now if you go over to the latest ukv you'll be able to see that over the coming hours we are going to see precipitation increasing from the west and it is going to really start to push in through sunday evening into the early hours of monday and give widespread rain further westwards through most of monday and then it starts to push northwards into Monday evening. You can see for the far east of England, we do see quite a bit of cloud. We do see some outbreaks of rain, but it's not particularly significant at all. Majority of the rain stays further northwards and westwards. And you can see through Monday afternoon into the evening, a lot of that precipitation pushes into Scotland over the higher ground. We start to see some quite significant snow starting to appear. Again, it's all concentrated further northwards and westwards as we hit into Tuesday. We could see some further break outbreaks of rain in the east there for a time through Tuesday before starting to sort of disintegrate away. Now that area of precipitation has started to move away and start to lose its intensity. Then we could see more precipitation moving in the form of convective showers through much of Wednesday. Again, having quite a large wintry flavour over the higher ground in higher intensity. Uh, uh, of those showers and then you can see again another batch of very heavy rain moving in for the early hours of thursday again snow over some of the higher ground where we have those higher intensities and just widespread pretty heavy showers further eastwards as well eventually starting to clear into thursday but still seeing lots and lots of showers around that is going to be the real emphasis that yes there are going to be some weather fronts there are going to be occluded fronts there are going to be disturbances that really enhance the precipitation but outside of that we're still going to see lots of hefty showers because the pressure is so low as said though as we head into friday into the bank holiday weekend into the easter weekend things do start to turn a little bit quieter perhaps you see there every friday morning showers aren't as widespread uh, and aren't as intense but we'll have to wait another day or two until the ukv properly gets into the time frame of next weekend but from the longer term prospects definitely looks like pressure will be rising slightly 
and we could see a slight improvement into next weekend but i don't think it's going to be uh water or sunshine or warmth at all still going to be fairly chilly and still going to have showers around just might not be as heavy the reason for this is low pressure is moving back in it's going to kind of park itself across western parts over the coming days pretty deep lows there around 980 millibars it's just going to keep it very unsettled all the way towards the latter part of next week but you can see pressure is rising in the east and hopefully if that can build in and fill in this low we could see some slightly dry conditions into the weekend the upper temperatures look at that still remaining cool I wouldn't say cold, still below average, and that's how the most of this week is going to be seen. Uh, you can see as we head into Monday, the reason why we're going to see snow pushing in is because we have got particularly cold air there, minus 5 to minus 8 degrees, quite a bit colder than it is elsewhere, and that's why we're seeing a bit of snow there. But most areas slightly below average, keeping it chilly and unsettled. If we look at the max temperatures, you can see through this afternoon, 10 to 12 degrees, as I said earlier. As we head into tomorrow, it could be an isolated frost further northwards and maybe eastwards, where we do have, again, clearer skies. And then as we head into Monday afternoon, again, we can see those temperatures rising to around 10 or 11 degrees at best, as we start to see more persistent rain and hefty showers pushing in. Look across far north of England into Scotland, really quite cold, low single digits, if not below freezing in, in areas. As we progress into Tuesday, again, we do start to see those temperatures stay well below freezing further northwards, mid single digits further southwards, and by the afternoon, again, struggling into the double digits quite widely further southwards, further northwards, if not around freezing across the higher ground of Scotland. And then finally, as we into Wednesday and Thursday, again, 10 to 12 degrees further eastwards across England, but still feeling chilly, colder further northwards. As we head into Thursday and Friday, widespread overnight frost for parts of the Republic of Ireland there into Scotland, cold during the afternoon, only 8 to 10 degrees at best, and again another chilly night as we head into Friday. Definitely further northwards, it's going to be quite a bit colder than it is further south. So further southwards, we could still see 10 to 12 degrees on a majority of days, a couple of days chillier here or there, and maybe the ice age frost, but further northwards, temperatures could be really strong in the low single digits, if not getting not getting much above freezing over the higher ground and well below freezing overnight so wintry conditions uh, returning further northwards further southwards cold but nothing out of the ordinary for early to mid spring so yeah not ideal as we head into the easter weekend where of course kind of the benchmark as we really start to push into the bulk of sw spring where many start to expect more sunshine more dry conditions and the first signs of warmth this year doesn't look too likely at all of course the overall cet is actually above average for march by about a degree or two so it's not been a cold march at all but just as we'd start to expect warmer spells starting to appear perhaps generally just warmer weather it looks like the temperatures are going to stay stationary if not cool down a little bit as we head towards the end of march into early april now, if you compare to the latest GFS, uh, this is the six o'clock run as the midday run hasn't fully come out yet, and you can see the northerly winds in at the moment. Eventually, low pressure is going to park itself over the top of us into the middle of this week. But as you can see, into the weekend, it does fill in very slowly, and that could allow those showers to reduce through next Saturday and Sunday. But as we into early April, look at this massive Greenland high developing. We see northerly winds bringing some really cold air in for much of northern England and Scotland. There, the minus ten isotherm moves in. That is incredibly cold for this time of year. Look at that temperature deviation: ten to twelve degrees below average. The potential equivalent temperature is very cold we would be looking at pretty widespread snow there for northern areas and you couldn't even rule it out further southwards with the minus five isotherm in and it stays cold all the way through the first week of april a really quite significant and even prolonged spell of colder weather there again if we were in january time we would be looking at widespread heavy snow and widespread ice days with these sort of upper air temperatures coming in persistently from the north and the east but of course being early April, you can see as soon as that cold air reaches our uh, shores, it does start to warm up quite quickly and fragment within about 24 hours. So 
uh, we'd have to see repeated pulses of northerly winds to sustain this. And we do sustain it for a few days, for eventually it does start to turn a little bit milder. So pretty significant synoptic pattern, a very, uh, if, if not actually a very cold synoptic pattern, but at the surface, we wouldn't expect anything like January uh, conditions simply because it is April. But there still could be snow around, still would be a very cold wind chill, generally very cool con temperatures, mid single digits at best uh, and of course overnight frosts would be likely with this sort of scenario now it's not guaranteed but there are quite a few runs showing that sort of pattern and the gm does follow suit again low pressure parking over the top of us very unsettled over the coming days and then eventually northerly winds push back in as we see uh, a greenland high develop now here we don't have as much in terms of cold air pushing in but there still is some quite cold air to the northern edge so this would be as unsettled as horrible but it probably wouldn't be quite as cold so it's very similar to the gfs but just not quite got quite got those colder air masses pushing in so the overall synoptics are fairly locked in but because this time of year you really do need a direct northerly to see properly cold air move in there is still some uncertainty exactly how much cold air feeds our way because see the gm synoptically is very similar with northerly winds trying to push in and low pressure spinning up over the top of us uh with that cold air wrapping in and if we compare to the ecmwf uh, again low pressure parking over the top of us this week very unsettled and then again as we enter the longer range northeasterly winds pushing in again because it's taken a longer track we don't actually get a lot of this cold air in initially but could arrive later on if we do see this sustain but regardless, still a chilly, cold sort of pattern with these northeasterly winds pushing in. The sea surface temperatures across the North Sea are starting to rise now, but are still pretty cold. They normally uh, get to their coldest point through February and March, so they are starting to creep up. But uh, still would be very chilly with that easterly flow pushing in off the North Sea. So yeah, even though you see the UF doesn't produce anything too directly cold, it still would be pretty chilly at the surface. So to finish by looking at the latest ensembles, you can see this pattern pretty well. Um, around average, hovering above and below the next week for London. Of course, further north it is a lot colder. Um, but definitely seeing the spells are slightly above, slightly below. And again, that's because of weather fronts, low pressure systems pushing in. But look around the first couple of days of April, we do see a bit of a dip to below average. And there are some very mild runs appearing, but there are quite a few very cold runs appearing. 10 plus degrees below average, minus 10 isotherm or lower pushing in. Now, I do think that's a bit of a stretch for England, especially for southern England. Plausible further north, as we saw from the GFS operational. But you can see there are some very milder runs, and that is because with the amplification of the jet stream, we're going to see some very cold air pushing out into the mid-latitudes, and we're likely to see some very warm air pushing northwards as well. It's where that setup, where those alignments do fall. So obviously those warmer runs have more of a southerly flow across northwest Europe, perhaps the very cold air moving into the Atlantic, or towards northeast Canada, towards northeast America. However, those colder runs will have that warmer plume probably out towards Eastern Europe or something, and it would have the much colder plume over the top of us, like the GFS run does have. So you can see, as we head into early April, there are a lot of plausible ideas, and quite a few of them at this stage are showing quite a cold, if not very cold, pattern appearing. As I said, though, actually at the surface, it probably wouldn't be all too cold relative to sort of winter temperatures you see over the next week struggling towards 10 degrees maybe slightly higher into next weekend as things turn slightly drier maybe 11 12 13 14 then another dip into the first full week of april there you see the operational run which does go very cold isn't actually showing anything amazing cold at the surface look at that seven or eight degrees so it is cold for the time of year a good few degrees below average maybe as much as five six degrees below average but it's not the ice days that we would expect if this pattern had happened in the middle of winter. Of course, this will be sort of uh, have a sort of a gradient over the course of the country. Of course, Scotland would be colder inevitably. Uh, but yeah, going to have to keep a very close eye on this pattern as it could bring quite a chill widely as we head into early April. And if you do compare to the ECMUF ensembles to see if we've got cross-model consensus, and you can see there is similar trends from the ECMWF. Around average over the next week, a little bit of a spike into next weekend and the start of the following week into Easter Monday. 
potentially slightly drier and potentially a little bit warmer. And then we see that dip in the first full week of April with some very cold runs appearing. Again, there are some very mild runs as well, so quite a split. But at this stage, we'll have to keep a very close eye on it. Again, the operational runs all building in some sort of Greenland High or Mid-Atlantic Ridge and all trying to push cold air across northern and western Europe. We'll just have to see how successful they are over the coming days and coming weeks. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. Grab you new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.